second speaker, Dr. Nur Mohammad Shoaib. Shoaib. He received his BA in Oriental Studies uh, from Horo State University in Tajikistan in 1997. In 2001, he completed a one-year intensive Horo English program and was then offered a place on the two-year graduate program at the IAS. Nur Amatra then joined the uh, Oriental Studies Department at the University of Cambridge. Uh, and in 2005, he received his MPhil in Middle Eastern and Islamic Studies. In the same year, he was awarded an IAS doctoral scholarship to pursue his PhD at the Department of History at SOAS, where he completed his PhD in 2014. Nur Amatra is currently working at the Ismaili uh, Special Collections Unit at the IAS. He's currently converting his PhD thesis into a monograph and writing an article entitled Shah Hamush and the Story of Arrival. The title of Nurul Shah's presentation today is Schisms and Their Effect on the Ismaili Communities of Badakhshan. Nurul Shah, over to you, please. Uh, thank you, Darius, for the presentation and thank you for the organizer of the, of the conference to Dagi and Orhan for bringing scholars to this stimulating platform to discuss various aspects of Ismaili and uh, wider Muslim, uh, from wider Muslim history. So as, as Darius mentioned, the topic of my today's presentation is schism and the effect on the Ismaili communities of Badakhshan. So after the death of the 28th Ismaili Imam, Shamsuddin Muhammad, who died in 1310, an obscure dispute over his succession arose within his family that divided the Nizari Ismailis into the Qasim Shahi and Muhammad Shahi lines. The schism was brought to the attention of scholars by Vladimir Ivanov in 1938. Analyzing the content of the of an uh, Risala Irshad Talibin Fizik Rahimat al Ismailiyin, a work copied in Badakhshan in 1523, Ivanov recounts. The treatise chiefly deals with the tradition concerning the imamat according to the Ismaili theory and the duties of the faithful followers towards them. Works of this kind are not uncommon, but an extraordinary feature of this opuscle is the most interesting reference to a split in the house of the Nizari imams. Modern scholars concede that this schism is an obscure one as no reference to it is given in early historical sources. According to the oral tradition of the Muhammad Shahis of Syria, the split occurred after the death of Shamsuddin Muhammad. Muhammad. The Syrian Muhammad Shahis are of the opinion that Shamsuddin Muhammad had three sons, Alauddin Mumin, Mumin Shah, Qasim Shah, and Kiyo Shah. The dispute arose between Alauddin, the elder son of Shamsuddin, and his younger brother, Qasim Shah, who, according to the Syrian oral tradition, is considered the hujjat of Alauddin Mumin Shah. A different narrative of this schism is presented in two other works, the Irshad al-Talibin that I mentioned earlier, which is ascribed to Mohib Ali Kunduzi, and the Lamaat al-Tayarin, a South Asian Muhammad Shahi source, composed in 1698-99 by a certain Ghulam Ali bin Muhammad. According to these sources, the schism occurred after the death of Mumin Shah, um, rather than of Shamsuddin Muhammad, the sources from Badakhshan in South Asia present Mumin Shah as the son of Shamsuddin Muhammad. We learn from these sources that Muhammad Shah and Qasim Shah, grandsons of Shamsuddin Muhammad, were brothers uh, and brothers who contest, contested the office of the Imamat after the death of their father, Mumin Shah. The question becomes more complex due to the absence of Mumin Shah's name in the Qasim Shahi Shajara, the genealogical table of Imams. Hence, this schism remains an unsolved puzzle which awaits the further research. The Qasim Shahi Ismailis are of the opinion that Qasim Shah was poisoned in 1368. This event is clearly expounded in a Qasida composed by Doi and Judani in the first half of the 16th century. The death of Qasim Shah was probably the reason for the split, as the matter of his family, as a member of his family, would uh, seem to have been involved in this vicious act. The split resulted in the division among various Ismaili communities, which is discussed in another 15th century custom Shahi source, the Hafnuktar. A group, uh, we learned from Hafnuktar that a group of the accursed who on the face of things were among the family members had led several servants in every region who were soldiers 
on the path to hell. Previously, the people of Badakhshan, the fortress of Zafar, the realm of Egypt in Narjawan, and other places followed the true summons, but at the instigation of the factions, they have been uh, drowned in the ocean of iniquity. Now the foremost duty of the Muallims or the teachers of the present time is to make every possible human effort to guide the community to the true path according to the decree of the Imams. These passages uh, taken from the Hafnuktab. It is evident from this passage that Ismailis of Badakhshan who followed the Qasim Shahi lines at some point in the 15th century started following the Muhammad Shahi line. This clearly shows that schism brought a degree of disorganization to the Nizari communities on a larger scale, particularly from the 15th century onwards. Although the schism occurred in the 14th century in Iran, the new splinter group continuously attempted to legitimize the claims of the Imams from their respective lines until the 17th and even 18th centuries. Even though this schism divided the Nizaris, the Nizaris, the communities residing in Badakhshan maintained the relationship with both lines. This is clearly seen in the transference and preservation of Ismaili sources in Badakhshan. This implies that both lines were act actively engaged in the religious life in Badakhshan until the followers of Muhammad Shahi line merged with the Qasim Shahi sometimes in the 18th century. I will talk about this transformation briefly later on in my presentation. In this presentation, I will briefly talk about the activity of Muhammad Shahi in Badakhshan, the activities of Qasim Shahi in Badakhshan, and then to provide some discussion about the transformation and return to the right path to the Qasim Shoi line of the Imam. The Muhammad Shoi Ismailis in Badakhshan. It should be emphasized that there is no information available on the doctrines and practices of the Muhammad Shoi Nizaris in Badakhshan. What is known from fragmentary sources is that the Muhammad Shoi's propagated their doctrine under the guise of the 12 Ashis. The question is when and how the Muhammad Shoi succeeded in spreading their teaching in Badakhshan. As we, know, uh, as we know, the Ismailis of Badakhshan followed the Fatimi teaching through the writings of Nasser al-Khusra. Although there were sporadic connections with the Nizaris of Iran, the Ismailis of Badakhshan still followed the tradition of Nasser al-Khusra, which is known in the region as Dawat in Osir. We learn from the Silky Guharez that a work produced in Badakhshan sometimes in the 18th century about the activity of Muhammad Shawi representatives in Badakhshan. A certain Sayyid Mehtar was the local representative of Muhammad Shahis during the reign of Muhammad Shah bin Mumin Shah, who passed away in 1404. This is one of the Muhammad Shahi Imams. His successor is listed as, the, as Sayyid Ali, who was followed by a certain Sayyid Salman. It is important to note that the term Rahi is used in Gawarez in relation to high ranking dignitaries of the Muhammad Shahi line. The Rahi is called people to Maulana Shah's teaching, according to narratives in the Guharez, until the early or mid 16th century. The influence of the Nizari Muhammad Shahis in Badakhshan becomes more prominent during the Imamate of Raziyyadin bin Nitaya, who succeeded his father Tahir bin Raziyyadin uh, in, uh, in mid uh, 15th century. Raziyyadin, or Shah Raziyyadin's Imamate, coincides with the advance of the Timurids into Badakhshan. The Timurids had been ousted out from Mawarahunar by the Shaibanids who took the region under their control at the turn of the 15th century. It must be emphasized that Raziyyadin is the only high ranking dignitary in the Ismaili Muhammad Shahi hierarchy who not only lived in Badakhshan, but was, actively, was the active ruler of the region from 1505 to 1510. It is highly likely that Shah managed to consolidate the local population against the encroachment of the Shaibanis from Central Asia and the Timurids, of the, um, Timurids on the Mughals of India. Because of the political situation in the region was unsafe, it is unlikely that uh, Imam Razi and his close associates refrained from producing any doctrinal works in the region. Eventually, Razi Yedin was brutally, brutally executed by the Timurids and was succeeded by his son, Toir Shah, or Shah Toir, who, due to persecution by the Safavids in Iran, 
migrated from Iran to India. The arrival and rule of Razi Din over Badakhshan for a short period of time can be considered the main reason for the spread of Muhammad Shoi influence in Badakhshan. However, one can argue that it was not the first exposure of the Ismailis of Badakhshan to Muhammad Shoi activities. We learned from Tariq Rashidi uh, uh, that uh, Shorazi Yedin was the hereditary spiritual leader of these people, of the people Ismailis of Badakhshan, to whom and to his ancestors they had never failed to pay their annual tith uh, dues. It needs to be mentioned that the Muhammad Shai Imams had a large number of followers in Syria, Iran, Transoxonia, Badakhshan, and India. Their presence and prominence in India is directly related to the activity of Shotoher Dakani and his successors. It is safe to assume that after the death of Raziyeddin, Osho Raziyeddin, at some point in the 16th and uh, uh, 17th century, the followers of Muhammad Shoyis in Badakhshan started to change their allegiance to the Qasim Shoyi line of Imamas. So the Qasim Shoyi activity in Badakhshan. The presence of the Qasim Shoyi teaching in Badakhshan is logical continuation of the Ismaili tradition in Badakhshan. Shafiq Virani in his book refers to a document entitled Decree of Imam of the Imam Abdul Salam, Farmoni Shoyi Abdul, Shoy Abdul Salam, which was found by Ivanov and a Majmua in, in Kirman. Ivanov states that this document bears the signature of Shoy uh, Shoy Abdul Salam. And it says, this epistle addressed to the Ismailis of Badakhshan and Kabul, who followed the Imams of the Muhammad Shoi line, inviting the erring people to reconsider the grounds for their allegiance and return to the right, uh, to the fold of the right line of the Imams. This is to say the Qasim Shoi Imams. A similar statement found in other manuscripts in Badakhshan clearly shows that the text was appropriated even though the text may have been composed by Qasim Shoyis or vice versa. The sentence and return to the fold of the right line of the Imams, that is to say Qasim Shoyi, is the clear example uh, which shows that the sentence was continuously in a state of change as the Muhammad Shoyi representatives used it to win the Qasim Shoyis to their fold, to their branch or the other way around. It should be noted that the Qasim Shoyis of Badakhshan had no direct contact with the Imams, except those dignitaries who visited the Imam in Iran. The Silki Guharez employs the term Rohi uh, in relation to the Qasim Shoyi high-ranking dignitaries. We learned that a certain Sayyid Salman Abdul, Sayyid Muhammad Darwish, Sayyid Nuridin Muhammad, Sayyid Salman II, Khoja Malik Alo and Khoja Masum called people of Badakhshan to the Qasim Shahi line. And we can tentatively say that these, these uh, dignitaries were in charge of proselytizing the Qasim Shahi teaching in Badakhshan in the 16th and 17th century. It was during the Imamate of Imam Zulfiqar Ali in the second half of the 16th century when the Muhammad Shahis of Badakhshan started to join the Qasim Shahi Imams. This marks the transformation of the transformation and unity of the community. According to the narrative in Silki Guharez, Khoja Mahsoon visited Imam Zulfiqar Ali, the 37th Qasim Shoyi Imam, who lived in Anjudan. The precise date of this visit is not recorded in Silki Guharez, which may take may, may have taken place uh, sometimes in the first half of the 17th century. The Silki Guharez refers to the visit of another peer, Khoja Muhammad Soleh, to the court of the Imam, uh, which can be considered the last point of return or unification of the Qasim Shoyi line, lines. The passage in, this, in Guharez reads, as the wine of divine unity, Mayawadat Yiloi was handed to Khoja Muhammad Soleh as a whirling particle ascending the rays of sunlight he began his quest for the sun face of Maulana and enduring through an, an untiring search, he finally reached the world illuminating sun, namely Maulana Shoidin Hassan bin Maulana Sayyid Ali, and drank the wine of divine unity from the cup of his companions who were intimates of his audience. 
although the text of the Selki Guharres is permeated with the Sufi expressions, such as, uh, such as the wine of divine unity and the word illuminating sun, referring to Qasim Shahi Imam, it clearly gives the name of the Imam as Shahi Din Hassan, who was also known as Sayyid Hassan Bey, who succeeded to the Imam after the death of his father, Imam Sayyid Ali in 1754. This event has been discussed and by a number of scholars uh, who propose that this event uh, must have taken place sometimes in uh, 1730. However, this proposed date seems unconvincing. The text of Silki Guharres clearly indicates that Khoja Muhammad Saleh visited the Qasim Shahi Imam, whose pure name was Maulono Shahi Din Hassan bin Maulono Sayyid Ali who was the 42nd Qasim Shahi Imam. Hence, it is safe to conclude that this event happened after the death of Imam Hassan Ali and therefore took place much later than 1754. It follows that the second half of the 18th century marks the final unification process of the Qasim Shahi Nizaris of Badakhshan, which had been completed by the time of the visit of Khoja Soleh to the court of the Imam in Iran. The overlapping themes in this discourse on transformation do not allow us to mark this phenomenon with a specific date. What seems obvious in this regard is that the transformation was a long and slow process that might have started a few decades after the death of Imam Raziyyadin uh, bin Nitahir in the first half of the 16th century, which was caused uh, by the absence of contacts with Shotahir Dakani and his successors. While the Muhammad Shahi line became extinct, according to Dr. Daftari at some point around the end of the 18th century, the Qasim Shahi line continues to, to, to the present day. Expressing their devotion to Imam from the Ahl al Bayt, the Ismailis of Badakhshan refer to themselves by means of expression, expression the followers of the Dawat in Asir that was strengthened uh, strengthened the historical evolution of Ismaili teaching in Badakhshan from uh, 15th century until modern time. Thank you.